morning, everybody. Welcome to Art Goes and Art Goes and Yoho. So today we're talking about an artist by the name of Robert Smithson. He was born in 1938 and he lived till 1973. He is an American artist. Um, he was an unusual artist. So he was a sculptor, but he didn't make sculptures out of like clay or um, small things. He used um, rocks and debris and made large sculptures. So we call him an environmental artist. Sometimes people refer to him as a land artist. Um, so how many of you guys have ever made sculptures in the in the sand at the beach or like a sand castle um do you think your creation is still there or did something happen to it um so let's look at some of his artwork i'm going to bring in the share screen now and that's the slideshow so here is the slideshow um he started off making smaller sculptures. I already mentioned that. So this one is um, one that he created. It's called Allegon 2. And he wanted to express how energy is easier lost than obtained. And that was his goal with this piece, but he um, brought in wood materials. That's how he built it and built it straight into the gallery. This one is um, a piece called, it doesn't, doesn't actually have a title. He built it in New Jersey in a gallery and it has um, a, uh, back here is the drawing that he did before he actually built the sculpture. He did that a lot of with his, a lot of his sculptures. He built it first or he drew it first and then he built it. So then he built these wood boxes that he then put rocks into. This is mirror and crushed shells. So he put mirrors on the three sides here the, and the bottom and then put crushed shells in the middle. Um, he was really interested in playing with mirrors because they can create illusions like depth of space and things like that. This one is also um, another one that was mirrors and he got a lot of his um, materials straight from um, the area that he lived in New Jersey, he would go to the Jersey Shore and he would get materials from there. Um, but this one has mirrors down here. You can see the corners of the mirrors. And then in the middle, he filled it with sand um, and um, put this straight into a gallery space. Um, the mirrors reflected the sand. It also gave the illusion that it was a lot longer than it really was, um, even though this was pretty good sized. I mean, it filled up a room in a gallery. This is another one that's just a mirror with some shells. It kind of gives that illusion of um, being bigger than it really is. This one was a kind of a small piece. Um, then we get to his land art. So this is a close up of one of his sketches for a project called the Island of Coal. He never actually got around to building this one but he kind of had to plan it out as you can see. And the reason why he has to plan these out is because um, he um, would, um, sometimes he would have to submit to like the planning committee of a city to, um, in order to install it. So, um, so he would have to have a plan, kind of like a blueprint you would have to have for a house. This one is titled Glue Pour, and it is literally a bucket of glue that he knocked down and poured over the side of a hillside. Um, he took videos of this as well as photographs um, to kind of see what happened as the glue continued on down the hill and then, you know, started to dry up. Um, this was another one. He was really fascinated by um, dump trucks and work sites um, and how much earth they could move and things like that. So um, this one was actually um, asphalt, which is what roads are made with. Um, and he just took the dump truck and he had it dumped down this hillside and then he took photographs and video of it while it was dumping down. Um, and so this is the final piece of that. This one's titled Dead Tree. He actually brought a tree that had been knocked over into um, a gallery. And um, so it kind of brings up the question is, what makes art? Is it art if it's in a gallery? Is it art if it's not in a gallery? Um, those are just some of the things I want you guys to think about.
This one is partially buried woodshed. This was actually on the campus, the college campus where he went to college and also taught. Um, they were gonna demolish the woodshed anyway um, because it was falling apart. So he asked permission to change it into an art piece. Um, so he brought in several dump truck loads of dirt to cover it up both inside and outside. This is titled The Broken Circle. Um, this one's actually in the Netherlands. They were doing a um, construction project there that they were filling in some parts of the lake. Um, so he asked if he could create an art piece um, to go with it. This is what he created. And he used a lot of circles and swirls in his um, pictures because it's something that you see in nature a lot. This one is the Spiral Hill. Um, this was when he first built it. He used dirt and he kind of built up this spiral. Um, and then as it aged over time, you can see it here, it's um, worn away a bit and then it's covered in vegetation. So remember how I asked about if you had made a sculpture in the sand, would it still be there? Would something happen to it? Well, chances are it might have been washed away. Um, another kid could have come along and crushed it. Maybe you crushed it yourself, but it would disappear over time. And this, whoops. This is our last one. This is titled the Spiral Jetty. Um, this one is built in the Great Salt Lake in um, Utah. This is probably his most famous one. So he brought in multiple large trucks to bring dirt and rubble and rocks and salt down to the water to build it. Um, and he, made it so that it was tall enough that people could walk on it. Um, sometimes it's more submerged under the water um, than in this picture. That's because sometimes the water levels change. Um, you can also see on the edges of it, there's this kind of white colored rocks. So the Great Salt Lake is made with salt water. And when salt water evaporates, it leaves behind salt crystals. And those salt crystals are what gives those rocks the white colors. That's the salt that's been left behind. Um, so it brings up some art, art questions for you. So does art always belong in a museum? Yes or no? Um, can art become part of the environment? What do you think is gonna happen over time? Do you think eventually this would be covered totally in water? Do you think that the rock structure itself will break down? Do you think you'll still be able to walk on it? What would you do if you were able to walk along the spiral? Do you, would you? Um, what do you think it would look like if you flew a plane over the top of it? Um, Personally, I think it would look like a snail if you we were looking down on top of it because it kind of has that snail look. So um, where are other examples of swirls or spirals found in nature? So a lot of shells have them, um, snails, fiddlehead ferns, vine tendrils, goat horns, tornadoes. Even if you look at your fingerprints, you can see swirls in them. Um, Snakes curl up in a swirl pattern, chameleons' tails. Um, there's lots of things that have swirls up in nature. So, and then our last thing here is that I'm gonna show you is this short little video that demonstrates the project that you're gonna do today. All right, I'm gonna do a quick demonstration of our art project um, that goes along with our Robert lesson so he was an environmental artist so you're just going to come outside and make something beautiful in your environment so i have this pile of pine needles here at the end and i'm going to just make them into something kind of interesting robert smith has used a lot of spirals so i think i'm going to make a little spiral here i'm going to come out from the big pile I'm going to 
add some other wood pieces to make it interesting. All right, I have to thank my son, John Yoho, for taking care of that for me. He did an awesome job. And um, so I'm gonna end the slideshow there. That was the slideshow. So I hope that you will take some time today to go outside and create a project in the environment. You can use leaves, pine needles, dirt, rocks, anything that you can find outside. Um, and then email your teacher so that I can see um, what it looks like because I'm really excited to see these. Thank you very much. Have a nice rest of your day. Bye.